Hello Mila, hello Jack. Hello everybody else who's watching and welcome to Storytime with Grandad. Today's story is from Frog and Toad and it is Frog and Toad are friends. The first story is Spring. Frog ran up the path to Toad's house. He knocked on the front door. There was no answer. Toad, Toad, shouted Frog. Wake up, it is Spring. Blah, said a voice from inside the house. Toad, Toad, cried Frog. The sun is shining. The snow is melting. Wake up. I'm not here, said the voice. Frog walked into the house. It was dark. All the shutters were closed. Toad, where are you? called Frog. Go away, said the voice. From a corner of the room, Toad was lying in bed. He had pulled all the bedclothes over his head. Frog pushed Toad out of the bed. He pushed him out of the house and onto the front porch. Toad blinked in the bright sun. Help, said Toad. I cannot see anything. Don't be silly, said Frog. What you see is the clear, warm light of April. And it means that we can begin a whole new year together, Toad. Think of it, said Frog. We'll skip through the meadows and run through the woods and swim in the river. In the evenings, we'll sit here on this front porch and count the stars. You can count them, Frog, said Toad. I will be too tired. I'm going back to bed. Toad went back into the house. He got back into bed and pulled the bedclothes over his head again. But Toad, cried Frog. You will miss all the fun. Listen, Frog, said Toad. How long have I been asleep? You've been asleep since November, said Frog. Well then, said Toad, a little more sleep will not hurt me. Come back again and wake me up at about half past May. Good night, Frog. But Toad, said Frog. I will be lonely until then. Toad did not answer. He had fallen asleep. Frog looked at Toad's calendar. The November page was still on top. Frog tore off the November page. He tore off the December page and the January page and the February page and the March page. He came to the April page. Frog tore off the April page too. Then Frog ran back to Toad's bed. Toad, Toad, wake up. It is May now. What? said Toad. Can it be May so soon? Yes, said Frog. Look at your calendar. Toad looked up at the calendar. The May page was on top. Why? It is May, said Toad as he climbed out of bed. And he and Frog ran outside to see how the world was looking in the spring. The story. One day in summer, Frog was not feeling well. Toad, said Frog, you are looking quite green. But I always look green, said Frog. I am a frog. Today you look very green, even for a frog, said Toad. Get into my bed and rest. Toad made Frog a cup of hot tea. Frog drank the tea and then he said, Tell me a story while I am resting. All right, said Toad, let me think of a story to tell you. Toad thought and thought, but he could not think of a story to tell Frog. I'll go onto the front porch and walk up and down, said Toad. Perhaps that will help me to think of a story. Toad walked up and down on the porch for a long time, but he could not think of a story to tell Frog. Then Toad went to the house and stood on his head. Why are you standing on your head? asked Frog. I hope that if I stand on my head, it will help me to think of a story, said Toad. Toad stood on his head for a long time, but he could not think of a story to tell Frog. 
Then Toad poured a glass of water over his head. Why are you pouring water over your head? asked Frog. I hope that if I pour water over my head, it will help me to think of a story, said Toad. Toad poured many glasses of water over his head, but he could not think of a story to tell Frog. Then Toad began to bang his head against the wall. Why are you banging your head against the wall? asked Frog. I hope that if I bang my head against the wall hard enough, it will help me to think of a story, said Toad. I'm feeling much better now, Toad, said Frog. I do not think I need a story any more. Then you get out of bed and let me get into it, said Toad, because now I feel terrible. Frog said, would you like me to tell you a story, Toad? Yes, said Toad, if you know one. Once upon a time, said Frog, there were two good friends, a frog and a toad. The frog was not feeling well. He asked his friend the toad to tell him a story. The toad could not think of a story. He walked up and down on the porch, but he couldn't think of a story. He stood on his head, but he couldn't think of a story. He poured water over his head, but he couldn't think of a story. He banged his head against the wall, but he still could not think of a story. Then the toad did not feel so well and the frog felt better. So the toad went to bed, and the frog got up and told him a story. The end. How was that, toad? asked frog. But toad did not answer. He had fallen asleep. A lost button. Toad and frog went for a long walk. They walked across a large meadow. They walked in the woods. They walked along the river. At last they went back home to toad's house. Oh, bother, said toad. Not only do my feet hurt, but I have lost one of the buttons on my jacket. Don't worry, said Frog. We will go back to all the places where we walked. We will soon find your button. They walked back to the large meadow. They began to look for the button in the tall grass. Here's your button, cried Frog. That's not my button, said Toad. That button is black. My button was white. Toad put the black button in his pocket. A sparrow flew down. Excuse me, said the sparrow. Did you lose a button? I found one. That is not my button, said Toad. That button has two holes. My button has four holes. Toad put the button with two holes in his pocket. They went back to the woods and looked on the dark paths. Here's your button, said Frog. That's not my button, cried Toad. That button is small. My button was big. Toad put the small button in his pocket. A raccoon came out from behind a tree. I heard that you were looking for a button, he said. Here's one that I just found. That is not my button, wailed Toad. That button is square. My button was round. Toad put the square button in his pocket. Frog and Toad went back to the river. They looked for the button in the mud. Here's your button, said Frog. That's not my button, shouted Toad. That button is thin. My button was thick. Toad put the thin button in his pocket. He was very angry. He jumped up and down and screamed. The whole world is covered with buttons and not one of them is mine. Toad ran home and slammed the door. There on the floor he saw his white four-hold big round thick button. Oh, said Toad. It was here all the time. What a lot of trouble I have made for Frog. Toad took all the buttons out of his pocket. He took his sewing box down from the shelf. Toad sewed the buttons all over his jacket. The next day, Toad gave his jacket to Frog. Frog thought that it was beautiful. He put it on and jumped for joy. None of the buttons fell off. Toad had sewed them on very well. The end. Goodbye, Mina. Goodbye, Jack. I'll see you soon. Goodbye, everybody. Bye.